Hey y'all, I'm Alex from Reach and Reverie and welcome to our 22nd week of gardening here on our mini homestead. I can't wait to show you what's still hanging on this late in the season, so let's go take a look. One thing that we're having a huge success with this year are our pomegranates. This tree is loaded full of them. Now we've already been harvesting quite a bit and I'm noticing that with all of this hot weather that we've been having and maybe a little overwatering on our part, some of our pomegranates are beginning to crack open and not all of them are ripe yet. So what we've been doing is anytime we think that they're almost ripe, we'll go ahead and pluck those and let them finish ripening on the counter. The ones that are open like this, we'll pull off and give to the chickens if it looks like there's already some bug damage on them. But we've been really, really happy with our harvest of pomegranates this year. This tree is just so bountiful and has been providing a lot of sweet, juicy fruits for us. I can't say that we've had as much success with these potted plants over here. I have three tomato plants and a tomatillo plant. In the past couple weeks, tomatillo plant has tapered off and gone away. My blue beauties are on their way out the door too. They are getting taken out by disease and heat stress. In the corner over here, I do have a husky red cherry tomato that even though it's starting to be blighty and a little sickly, it's still producing cherry tomatoes for me. So that makes me really happy. See, there's a yellow one right there. And it's also still putting off lots of little flowers. So I'm gonna keep watering this one and picking cherry tomatoes until it's done. But this late in the season, I'm not putting hardly any effort into getting rid of the sickness because we only have a handful of weeks left until our first frost anyway. So my spaghetti squash in this pot has been billowing over and just growing in every direction. So we'll see what he has to offer over the next couple weeks. I do apologize for not making a garden tour the past couple of weeks we were out of town and working on a lot of renovations in our house so we're back and kind of closing off the end of this season and keeping y'all guys as updated as we can I do have an acorn squash right here that is doing really nice some flowers my nasturtiums are still hanging in there and the watermelon plant over here gave me one watermelon we're gonna eat him this weekend and I have a bell pepper plant that is providing bell peppers. And my vincas, these beautiful flowers are also healthy as can be this late into the season. Evie, what are you doing? Are you digging? She says, I can't get to the chicken poop. She doesn't go after the chickens, but she does like to eat their poop. Hey girls girls are doing great. <laughs> my sunglasses fell off of my head. <laughs> the girls are doing great. They all came to say hi to you guys. Say hi girls. So our chickens, all nine of them, are going to be turning one year old this Wednesday. So say happy birthday to our girls. They're all about to be one year old on Wednesday. You girls are looking so grown up. We're very excited about that. We ordered 10 chicks last year and 9 out of the 10 have made it to a full year old. So we're really happy with these girls. They are just lovely, sweet girls, wonderful personalities. We love our girls. I'm curious to see how many eggs we have today. So let me just grab their egg basket. Let's go take a look. See how many we've gotten this afternoon. 
It's a pretty warm day. Usually on the days that are really hot, we get just a couple fewer eggs than we normally would. But with our nine chickens, we've been really fortunate to be averaging about seven eggs a day with our girls. Super excited about that. So let's open her up and take a look. All right. Looks like we have six, seven, eight, eight eggs today. Not bad for nine chickens. And like I said, we've been averaging seven. So we're happy with anywhere between five and nine eggs a day. We're really, really happy. So I'll prop that door open, grab my basket, and get these eggs. What's really neat is that each individual chicken will lay one colored egg. So if you really know your girls, you can see the eggs and know which chickens laid eggs for the day. And we always like to kind of check on who's laying eggs. We actually mark on the calendar every day how many eggs we get. And if we can, we'll try to keep in touch with um, who laid which egg just to kind of help monitor the chicken's health because every now and then a chicken can get egg bound if they stop laying for a while when everybody else is laying it could be a sign of a potential health concern so it's always very important to know your girls and we're fortunate that nobody lays quite identical eggs as each other so you can kind of tell them all apart So today we got eight eggs. It is normal for girls to take a couple days off here and there. Um, certain chicken breeds will lay more regularly and more consistently. So like Suniza, our gray chicken, she only lays about three eggs a week, three or four eggs a week. She typically lays every other day. And Odette will take a day or two off every week because she's a big heavy girl. But our Rhode Island Reds, they lay every single day. Our Australorp lays every single day, just about. So if they start taking days off, we start looking at them. I know Miss Myrtle, who is one of our Rhode Island Reds, she has prolapsed before. And she always, you know, we always kind of keep an eye on her, Miss Myrtle right here, to kind of check that she's laying good. But so far, these girls have just been effortless and wonderful little companions and pets that provide for our family this year. But maybe you're here not to see chickens and me collecting eggs, but you want to see this garden that we've been missing out on for the past couple weeks. So let's go take a look. I finally had to sweep this area. All of the pine needles had been falling from this pine tree up here and it was making it hard for me to open this door. So got rid of that, swept it all over there, added more compost over there, and now I have no trouble opening and closing my little garden door. All right guys, so welcome to the week 22 garden here. Now. A couple weeks ago, I showed y'all a video where I planted a fall garden in this area, and I have been struggling with it a little bit. Starting with us going on vacation for a week, I think that it wasn't watered evenly enough. Um, it was also really, really hot three weeks ago, and so we had poor germination to start off with. After we did get germination, we had a dozens of sparrows that came and just wiped out all of our new seedlings. So every single week I have been reseeding this garden bed and this is about four weeks after I shot my fall garden planting. Where are all my seedlings? I have a radish right there and I have a chewed up lettuce right there. I did get quite a bit of germination on this lettuce um, row right here and the sparrows came and picked all of them except for that last little survivor. And then I also had a handful of radishes that popped up which also were picked off by birds. You can see this one's a little chewed up too. So I think next time I seed I'm going to probably do another round of seeding this weekend. I am going to put bird netting over this garden bed just to kind of keep the sparrows out of it because we do want 
a fall garden. I did go ahead and put up this burlap that had been hanging over my squash bed all season just to kind of shade this area because it has been a really, really warm summer. And I think that might help a little bit with germination, keeping it just a little bit cooler than the rest of the garden. What do y'all think? My lonely marigold over here has gotten so much healthier since I've taken out the rest of this garden bed. I think it's not competing for nutrients and it's just really happy. There's a bunch of yellow flowers all over it. All over it. And it's really beautiful and green. Um, Midsummer, if you would have gone back and looked at these videos, this marigold plant was bleached. I almost am curious if the plants next to it were like putting off some kind of toxin into the soil that was making it like almost like competing for it, trying to like choke it out because the plant leaves on this marigold were just white. But since I pulled out everything else in the garden, they returned to a beautiful deep green color and they've been doing really well. Okra's hanging in there. I am only getting like one okra off of this plant a month. So for whatever reason, he's been struggling a lot. Okra really love the heat and they love the sun, but maybe we got a little bit too much heat and too much sun for this little okra. Now the seedlings that have done really well for me so far is this little area. This is where I used to have tomatoes and I pulled those out and planted some turnips. And all of these green little sprouts right here are baby turnips. I'm really excited about that. I'm actually successfully growing some fall crops. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I can kind of learn what's the difference between these. Maybe my soil is off. I don't know because I'm having really good germination here. I'm not having sparrows eating over here. I'm having a lot of bird predation in here and a lot of poor germination. So we'll just have to see. My jalapenos are doing good. I'm getting a few off of them still. Watermelon is doing great. I'll have to show you a closer look at the watermelon we have hanging on the fence, which is coming from this pot right here. My kale is doing good. Surprisingly, I planted this one back in early spring and kale's more of a cool weather plant, but it has hung in there all summer long. And my broccoli, surprisingly, is also still alive. Um, I think I'm gonna try to keep it around and see if maybe I can support it and kind of cross my fingers for potentially getting some early sprouting purple heads of broccoli after the cold weather hits. We'll see. I don't know if it works that way. This is gonna be a year old plant, so I don't know if, it'll, if it will produce um, ahead or not or if it even is strong enough with how long and spindly it is but this garden is all about experimentation and learning and I will share with you my successes and my failures along the way as we learn from them and this garden bed this has been my favorite garden space throughout my entire gardening experience this year the tomatoes are still doing really well I'm having a lot of fruit, but you can see that disease is finally creeping up on all of these tomatoes. And at this point, I am not doing much in the way of preventing it. I feel like we only have a handful of weeks left in the season, so it's just, it's gonna happen eventually. Um, I'm not gonna stress about the blight. My tomatoes on these plants are maturing faster this late in the season. So I'm getting smaller crops as the season goes on. At the beginning of the season, I had one almost as big as my, the palm of my hand, and now we're getting smaller ones. I'm also noticing on some of my tomatoes, we're having some bug damage where little worms are crawling in and starting to eat on these. So I'm trying to watch them, and as soon as they turn red, I'm picking them. So this tomato branch is down and pulled this way because I had a pumpkin branch, kind of like this one that reached out and grabbed the tomato plant and was using it as a trellis and pulled it over. Now, my chickens over here, they were able to jump up and kind of bite that pumpkin branch and they killed it. And I ended up pulling out that branch. But the tomato is now kind of just slumped over this way, still producing tomatoes, still producing fruit, so it's fine. This late in the season, you really can't be bothered by much. Um, just gotta go with the flow and 
be excited about what you do have. My basil is doing really good. I'm getting to the point where I'm no longer pulling off flower heads because it's getting kind of late in the season and I think it's kind of neat to let these guys go to seed, maybe let some of the seeds fall into this area and we might have some basil coming up um, next year, we'll see. But I do still harvest the basil. It is really, really sweet, really fragrant and beautiful, amazing flavor. And all of these fruits and leaves I do wash so I'm not even worried about them sitting in my basket of eggs right now. My brown jalapenos are doing good. This one's not ripe yet so it's still green but on this plant I do have one that has started turning a beautiful shade of like a purplish reddish brown. Once he's turned brown I'm going to pluck him off and we'll have a taste test with our brown jalapenos. These brown jalapenos have taken all season to give us basically two jalapenos. So I'm not sure if it was just a bad season for it or if these aren't very productive, but I'm gonna give them a couple more tries and see if maybe next season they'll be more productive for me. Cause at this point, six months into our growing season, I have two jalapenos to, to show for on these plants. My bell peppers on the other hand, I am harvesting these about every two to three weeks. And I've noticed that the albino bell pepper, it's a smaller variety. The bell peppers don't get quite as big as the other varieties of bell peppers from my experience. I mean, it could be my raised garden, but it could have been the summer conditions. I'm not really sure, but these are still babies. I'll give them a, another week or two of growing before we pluck them off. But I've noticed that plucking these off, um, as soon as I'm seeing other flowers popping up, um, Every time a new round of flowers pops up, when I harvest the bell peppers that are there, it helps promote growth in the new round of peppers. So I have been able to harvest these bell peppers steadily throughout the season. And you can see I have other plants that are also producing pretty well. So my four bell pepper plants have been enough for our family this season. I'm definitely gonna plant them again next season. They've been really hardy no complaints from them. They've been a little short. I think they were stunted by some um, leaf curl early in the season. I think I overwatered them when they were still starting out. I mean, as compared to my jalapeno plants, but they've produced wonderfully. So stunted, short has not slowed them down. My eggplants are doing really good just full of flowers. I think late in the season is where they're doing great. They are um, no longer being riddled by the flea beetles that were all over them early and mid season. And they are just embracing the heat. Eggplant does amazing in full sun with the heat. I have so many flowers on these plants. I'm gonna be getting so many more eggplants. And look at this one. I think that one's just about ready to harvest. I've been harvesting these Listata de Gandia just a little bit early, and I think that makes their flavor a little better because if you wait until you think they're ripe, they might be overripe. And the riper an eggplant is, the more bitter it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest him today. Coming in on this side of the trellis, I have a handful of black Hungarian jalapenos that are doing really well. This plant has been quite prolific, but my jalapenos are really small in size. So I've been harvesting them at about this size. I've had a few that are bigger, and these were super mild at the early end of the season, and now that we're later into the season, they have become very, very spicy. These are also maturing a lot smaller than they were early in the season. So I'm thinking just as the season goes on with how hot it is, all of my fruit is ripening just a little earlier than it was a couple months ago. So we're getting some smaller, smaller fruits, which isn't bad. I mean, we're still getting fruits. We are so fortunate to be getting what we're getting. I think that it's been a really rough season for everybody in our area. We've had one of the worst droughts 
over the past decade. And I've been speaking to some local farmers and all kinds of people from all walks of life, a lot of um, commercial growers as well. And everybody that I've talked to has had a terribly hard season this year trying to grow a garden. So I'm very mindful not to be too hard on myself. This is my first growing season and I know that I've walked away learning so much. So I'm just grateful, just really grateful. All right, my camera battery died. So I had to go run in the house and grab a new camera battery, not a new camera. So right before it cut out, I'm not sure if it got that clip, but I was telling you guys about how I don't want anyone to be discouraged um, by the size of your harvest that you got this year. It was an incredibly hard year in many ways. And I know where I live, this was the hardest, driest, hottest summer that we've seen in about the last 10 years. And this is my very first season gardening. And so the fact that I grew anything, I came away with so many experiences. I feel like I've learned an immeasurable amount from this time last year and just starting out and sticking with it. And this has really become a true passion and a wonderful hobby of mine. So I come away from this season not counting how many pounds of tomatoes I harvested or you know, how tall my jalapenos were or the fact that I only grew one bean doesn't disappoint me because I feel like this year has been just such an amazing learning experience and who couldn't be proud of that? So. I'm really excited. Anywhere where you guys are, hard year, easy year, tell me about it in the comments below, but don't be too hard on yourself. There's always next year, and no matter what happens, you can learn from it, and you can grow, and you just gotta be resilient, and everything's gonna be okay. All right, so I promised to show you where my watermelon is at as far as how big it is. And I'm actually really proud of this watermelon. I am not gonna lie, I did expect bigger watermelon from her Art Combs Ancient Watermelon, but out of our two plants, we've gotten two watermelons. So that's, in my eyes, two for two. There it is, we're supporting it with some pantyhose because it decided to grow up on a trellis. And this is like about the size of a junior football. And the reason I think that this is ready is because the stem, the curly Q opposite of the vine that it's growing on has dried out. And that should mean that it's ready to harvest. I'm gonna do a video on this watermelon harvesting and you guys will get to see what it looks like on the inside. We'll give you a review on how it tastes. This is the Art Combs Ancient Watermelon. These watermelon can grow, I believe, up to like 20 pounds. So we definitely got a little one. I don't know if it was the stress of this season or if it was the size pot I tried to grow it in. Um, there's unlimited factors, but both of my watermelons are really small compared to what they could be. So I am going to let you know how they taste and kind of fill you in on if I think I'm gonna grow these next year. But I'm gonna give you a clue. I always think that you can try again. My cucamelon over here is absolutely green. You can see that it is just filling up this wall of fencing around my garden. The thing about the cucamelons, I'm not sure why, but they haven't been very productive. I have seen immature baby cucumbers growing on this, but I haven't seen any mature ready to harvest cucumbers growing on this. I don't know if it's the birds eating it. At first I thought the birds were eating it, all the sparrows, because I do see quite a bit of poop um, on these plants where it looks like the birds are hanging out here. But I almost feel like if it were the sparrows eating all of my um, little cucumbers, I feel like I'd see more bird damage on this plant overall. So I'm starting to think that yes, the birds are eating some of these, but maybe for whatever reason, environmental factors, they're just not supporting 
melons up to mature harvest size. And cucumber melons are tiny. They mature up to about the size of a grape. And on my five cucumber melon plants that I started this season, I've gotten one cucumber melon to try. One grape sized cucumber to try. So I'm not sure. I am definitely want to grow these again. I've had a lot of fun growing cucumber melons, but this season has definitely been a learning experience. The, I don't know if maybe see like there's a baby cucumber melon, but I guarantee you it won't be there a week or two from now. I'm going to come back and look at it and it's going to be gone or shriveled up or something. So I don't know if I'm over fertilizing everything and it's getting too much nitrogen. Um, nitrogen is a nutrient that's incredibly important for your garden, but too much nitrogen promotes leafy green growth at the expense and at the cost of fruit development. So that's possible why I don't have cucumelons and that's possible why some of my potted plants didn't produce a whole lot of fruit or really big sized fruit. So that's something I'm going to have to look into next year is maybe changing or experimenting with my fertilizing regimen. I always use organic fertilizers. Um, Typically I use fertilizers that are designed for tomatoes just across the board for my whole garden, but maybe I can change that next year and just possibly start off with some bone meal um, in mid-season and start, start off with blood meal in the beginning of the season and of course supplement potentially with some um, potash and maybe just stick to that next year and see if that works a little bit better than the stronger tomato fertilizer because I've noticed that with some of my plants that they are growing a ton this plant should be full of cucumelons and all I see are leaves so we'll see we'll have to wait and see garden tours 2021 if that has changed I mean it could just be that it was a really hot summer I don't know well thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and joining me on our 22nd weekly garden tour here at Reaching Reverie. I hope you guys hang around and as the season goes on, this is kind of towards the end of our summer season, we may do a few more garden tours or we may wrap up the garden for the year and just come in with some um, updates on how our fall and midwinter garden goes and otherwise we will get back to gardening tours, gardening advice, maybe do some startup seed choosing, garden planning videos for 2021 and we can look forward to some other really neat stuff on our channel through the winter season. My next playlist that I'm thinking about building is going to be a video all about Evie, our borzoi, and maybe give you all some insights into her breed, the borzoi, and see if that's the right breed for some of you guys. Some pros, cons, what we love about her and some things that maybe some of you might not love about the breed. So stay tuned, that's gonna be ex super exciting. We love her and she's a breed of dog that a lot of people have never heard of or seen before. So I think it'd be neat to show y'all guys our experiences with her. So stay tuned. There's my love. Evie, I was just talking about you. What's that on your head? Were you laying in the dirt? Look at this. You look like your brindle with that dirt on your face. <laughs> yeah. People want to know more about you, my love. What should we tell him? Should we tell him all your secrets? All of them? Maybe we'll keep just a few between us. What do you think? Mm, that looks like a yes to me. <laughs> oh, my love. Your sweetheart. Evie the Borzoi right there. Also known as a Russian wolfhound. Like a long-haired greyhound, but a little bigger. 